topic of my talk is WHO glioma classification update in genomics, what every radiologist needs to know. I'm going to start with showing a case over here, a 55-year-old female presenting with word finding difficulty. Uh, the initial MRI shows a non-enhancing infiltrative signal abnormality involving the left temporal lobe as well as the left insula and if I ask my trainees usually what is the differential diagnosis and that's what they will usually start with you know it could be an infarct, infection, encephalitis and then most of them will respond by saying because it's a non-enhancing tumor it could be a low-grade neoplasm such as a glioma. However, I want to emphasize this, that this is what my impression should look like, that uh, I'm, I'm thinking that this is a mildly expansile infiltrative, even though non-enhancing tumor, but I do think that this is going to be an aggressive tumor, such as an IDH wild type infiltrative glioma. And the reason for that, I'll come back uh, during my lecture, why uh, I would... Uh, write an impression like that uh, and there's a reason to do that because these are aggressive tumors and you can see within the tumors follow up you know the tumor is enhancing and it's showing much more aggressive fe imaging features now at that time you know the tumor was taken out uh, partially and uh, the integrated histological diagnosis showed that this is a WHO grade 4 glioblastoma IDH wild type, right? So that becomes an important aspect of why we should be uh, dictating these cases in a manner where we have the genomic information also integrated into our reports. So the objectives of my talk, I'm going to talk about some of the important genetic mutations in gliomas, IDH, 1P19Q. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, you know, how WHO glioma classification update 2016 um, uh, should be uh, used in our reports, imaging reports, and how we can incorporate some of this molecular information, for example, IDH, 1P19Q, uh, etc., in, in our radiology reports. So if you look back, uh, the older WHO 2007 classification of CNS tumors divided the gliomas into astrocytic morphology and these were labeled as either grade 2, grade 3 or grade 4 or oligodendrogliomas which were graded as grade 2 or 3 and then there was a category which was ambiguous morphology which the neuropathologist will call as oligoastrocytoma whether in grade 2 or 3. The, one of the biggest issues with this kind of histology based classification system was that there was very high inter-observer variability. No two neuropathologists agreed with each other most of the times. And then also inability of this kind of classification system to predict clinical outcome. And what has happened in the last 10 years or so uh, with the discovery of IDH mutation there is a paradigm shift in classification and to some degree also management of these gliomas. One of the earliest papers in science um, showed that if you have IDH mediated glioblastoma, um, there is a much better survival compared to IDH wild type glioblastoma. So even though you have a histological diagnosis is the same, you know, the glioblastoma, but if you have IDH mutation, uh, these patients do much better than IDH wild type patients. The same concept was also shown in another paper um, uh, in 2009, which showed that this beneficial effect of IDH mutation uh, is not just seen in glioblastomas, but also seen in anaplastic astrocytomas. You have an anaplastic astrocytoma, which is IDH mutated. They're going to do much better than IDH wild type anaplastic astrocytomas. The same paper also showed that these IDH mutations, whether IDH 1 or 2, they occur in majority of the lower grade gliomas, so that's one thing. And this paper also showed that majority of the secondary GPMs, they also have IDH mutation. 
and only a small percentage, 5% of the primary GPMs have IDH mutation. So majority of the primary GPMs are going to be IDH wild type, bad tumors, but then there is a small percentage of primary GPMs uh, which are IDH mutated and they are the ones which are going to do uh, better as far as survival. This is another paper um, in 2015 in NEGM from the, um, you know, the, the TCGA group, uh, uh, which uh, looked at lower grade gliomas, grade 2 and 3, and divided these gliomas based on the IDH mutation. So majority will have IDH mutation. And the next thing you look at is 1P19Q co-deletion. And a big chunk of these tumors, IDH mutated tumors, also have 1P19Q correlation. And these were the ones which were classified as molecular oligodendrogliomas. If you have IDH mutation but don't have 1P19Q uh, correlation, you have ATRX. And these are the ones which are molecular astrocytomas. Another important thing which this paper showed that almost 20 to 25 percent of diffuse lower grade gliomas, which are grade 2 or 3, do not have IDH mutation. These are the ones which are IDH wild type and they are the ones which are going to do poorly. And these are the ones which people have also called them molecular GPMs or pre-GPM. And, uh, and that's an important differentiation this paper showed that if you have IDH wild type lower grade glioma, it's going to do much worse than an IDH mutated lower grade glioma. So what is IDH mutation? Isocitrate dehydrogenase. It's basically five genes encoding for three human IDH catalytic isozymes. Uh, majority uh, will have either IDH1 or 2, uh, but some cases also have IDH3 mutation. Uh, most of the times, you can detect IDH mutation with immunohistochemistry. Detects almost 85 to 90 percent of the cases. Uh, however, to have 100% uh, accuracy, you need to have pyro sequencing or next gen sequencing um, to really detect the IDH mutation uh, in, in a tumor tissue. IDH mutation occurs early in glioma genesis, uh, changes the function of enzymes and causing them to produce 2-hydroxyglutarate, a possible oncometabolite, and not to produce NADPH, which kind of protects the cells from uh, from some of the aggressive uh, features. Exactly how IDH mutation contributes to oncogenic transformation remains controversial. Uh, so based on the IDH mutation, you know, uh, you can divide adult diffuse infiltrated gliomas into the ones which have IDH mutation. As, as I said, majority will be IDH1 or IDH2 mutation. And the next thing to look at is if the tumor has 1P19Q co-deletion, and these are your molecular oligodendrogliomas. If they don't have 1P19Q co-deletion and they have ATRX and TP53, these are your molecular astrocytomas. And more than 50% of adult diffuse gliomas, they don't have IDH mutation. These are called IDH wild type and they have third mutation. And these are the ones which are your majority of them are your primary GBMs. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that, but you know, the next molecular marker you can look at is MGMT. Uh, and if these IDH wild type tumors have MGMT methylation, um, and they, they do a little bit better than the tumors which don't have MGMT methylation. And as I said, you know, more than 50% of primary GPMs, uh, these are your uh, IDH wild type tumors. The reason it's important to segregate these tumors based on these genomic markers uh, because the survival in each group is fairly different. You can see oligodendrogliomas uh, surviving almost uh, 15 years. The median survival for astrocytomas is 7 years. Whereas if you have an IDH wild type uh, glioma, uh, the chances are, you know, uh, the survival is going to be much less compared to the IDH mutated tumors. And if you have MGMT methylated IDH wild type glioma, they do a little bit better than IDH wild type unmethylated uh, gliomas. Another um, uh, two different groups which I'm going to discuss again, these are mostly uh, pediatric tumors, but uh, there is some overlap with the adult gliomas, so I'm going to discuss that. Is 
your BRAF driven tumors, they have either BRAF fusion or V600E mutation. And, and majority of these are your double previously called WHO grade 1 gliomas and the, the important aspect is that these tumors usually have very good survival, long-term survival. On the other end of the spectrum, there is another tumor which has been added to the WHO glioma classification update is your diffuse midline H3K27 mutant gliomas and uh, these again occur in um, young children or young adults and uh, the important aspect of this tumor is that the survival is really poor and that's the reason you know it's important to discuss these tumors you know, along with the adult gliomas. And majority of these tumors, um, uh, these subcategories, uh, I'm going to show you how these are really clinical syndromes because majority of them uh, have, have different age groups and the presentation is, uh, is kind of also um, more specific to the group. Uh, this is the paper which uh, WHO uh, published, you know, uh, discussing the 2016 classification update, uh, if, if somebody wants to go in more detail. Uh, but one of the things which came out of this uh, WHO classification update was that uh, now the neuropathologist will have to have three-layer diagnosis. So rather than a diagnosis just purely based on histology and grade, now we'll have to incorporate the molecular markers. For example, if the tumor is an oligodendroglioma and, and the grade is grade 2, uh, but the neuropathologist will also have to do IDH mutation status and 1P19Q. And if this tumor is IDH mutated and 1P19Q correlated, uh, the integrated diagnosis should look like this, where you have oligodendroglioma grade 2, IDH mutated and 1P19Q correlated. What is pre-science? Uh, and pre-science is the fact of knowing something before it takes place or for knowledge. And I always believe that, you know, this is really very important for glioma imagers. And uh, two of the things I always tell the trainees to look at uh, before you even look at the image, and I call it pre-image, is the age of the patient. Of course, that's very important. Uh, the reason it's very important for some of these glioma subclasses is majority of the young kids, they are going to have either BRAF or K27 mutant uh, gliomas. Young adults, majority will have IDH mutated or some will have K27 mutated uh, diffuse midline gliomas. If you are more than 40 years old, the chances are it's going to be an IDH wild type glioma. So that's important. And then the second thing which is really important, again, uh, from a glioma molecular subclassification system is the clinical presentation as majority of the IDH mutated tumors which are occurring in young adults they are majority asymptomatic whereas BRAF tumors which occur WHO grade 1 tumors majority of them occurring in young kids they usually present with seizures and majority of the IDH wild type tumors presenting in older patients they usually present with subacute neurological deficit and that's these are important aspects to keep in mind before you even start looking at the images. For example, uh, you know, this is an MRI of a, uh, of a patient which shows a really ugly uh, ring enhancing necrotic mass in the right frontal lobe, but fusion imaging shows the, the tumor is showing uh, remarkably increased blood volume. Uh, the pathology, histopathology is uh, very classic, uh, showing uh, endothelial hyperplasia, glomerulite formation, and and and, um, and, and uh, proliferation of the blood vessels. Uh, however, the most important thing to me is is the age of the patient. You know, this is an older individual. And then the second important thing is what is the clinical presentation? This patient has been having subacute neurological deficit, as you can see, one month history of left side weakness and difficulty speaking before the MRI was obtained, and. And these two important things, along with imaging and histopathology, um, of course, confirms that this is a glioblastoma, but more importantly, also confirms the molecular uh, subtyping, as I'm going to discuss. So a few years back, majority of the discussion at our tumor board used to look like this. You know, there is discussion about MRI, imaging, perfusion, histopathology, and then some of the immunostains. But now, majority of the discussion at our tumor boards uh, is kind of centered around this genomic analysis, also known as methylation uh, arrays and methylation analysis and copy number profile. 
where the neuropathologists are looking at how different genes and genetic pathways are either amplified or, 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 or suppressed in, in the tumor tissue. For example, this particular tumor um, is turned out there was uh, an IDH wild type glioma GBM, uh, also was MGMT unmethylated. EGFR was amplified as you can see from the methylation and the copy number profile. And, and this is really uh, what makes the diagnosis as an IDH wild type glioblastoma grade 4. I consider my GBMs to be um, good, bad and mad and this is what I consider as a bad GBM and we'll go to the good ones you know when we reach uh, the IDH mutation uh, mutated tumors uh, category. So majority of the IDH wild type gliomas uh, these are third mutated GBMs. They occur in older individuals. These are three different examples over here. They are necrotic, enhancing masses, usually have poor prognosis, and more importantly, presenting with subacute symptomatic uh, neurological deficit. Another example over here is um, is 43 year old female left frontal lobe tumor. If you look at the tumor, you know there is not much of enhancement. There is non-enhancing flare expansile signal abnormality. Um, there is some restricted diffusion in the medial part of the tumor and some increased blood volume also in that medial part of the tumor. However, the tumor looks very innocuous and uh, it, it looks almost like a, a like a low-grade glioma will be. Uh, the patient undergoes uh, uh, partial resection uh, and, and the histopathology comes back as anaplastic astrocytoma WHO grade 3. But more importantly, this tumor also had IDH wild type genomic markers, so the IDH mutation was absent. And that becomes really an important feature despite the tumor looking a non enhancing and low grade on imaging. Uh, and you can see within two months after resection and therapy, uh, there is a recurrence, nodular enhancing recurrence at the margin of the surgical resection cavity, which was resected again. And this time, the histopathology came back as a glioblastoma and not just a grade 3 tumor. And you can see the spirit patient doing poorly 11 months after um, the, the initial diagnosis and 14 months after the initial diagnosis. Uh, the follow-up MRI showing that the tumor continues to progress and the patient did poorly. Now, this is the category we, we talked about uh, from that NEGM paper that these are your lower grade gliomas despite having a grade 3 diagnosis but these are the tumors which don't have IDH mutation and these are your tumors which are going to do poorly also have been called as molecular GBM or pre-GBM uh, by various uh, researchers. And this led to WHO coming up with this uh, um, C impact now update 3 uh, which which categorize that you know um, that you know if you have uh, a, a lower grade glioma, for example, an anaplastic astrocytoma. Uh, but if this is an IDH wild type um, tumor by genomic markers, it actually should be uh, labeled as um, diffuse astro astrocytic glioma, IDH wild type with molecular features of glioblastoma WHO grade 4. The important thing is that these are the tumors which are going to do poorly and they should be treated aggressively. And, and, and almost treated as a glioblastoma from the get-go rather than uh, rather than treating them as as lower grade glioma. Now moving on um, to the IDH mutated gliomas, uh, this is an example over here, uh, a well-defined bifrontal lobe, large mass without uh, any significant edema. But the more important thing is that it's, this is a younger patient, 28-year-old male, uh, clinically intact. All this patient has is headaches, so there is no real neurological deficit. And, and this is, um, you know, the SWI imaging on this patient showing that this patient, this tumor is also partially calcified, as you can confirm with CT scan also. There's partial calcification, and turns out this is an oligodendroglioma, grade 2, IDH mutated, more importantly, 1P19 correlated, hence. Uh, this integrated diagnosis of a molecular oligodendroglioma. Now, molecular oligodendrogliomas, as we know, they have uh, a median survival of 15 years. Um, this is another patient which was diagnosed 
with a non-enhancing tumor in uh, the left temporal occipital region in 2011, did not undergo any therapy. Uh, the patient was put just on observation and you can see that the tumor uh, is, is very slowly, progressively increasing in size. And even in 2018, even though it has increased in size, there is no contrast enhancement. And at that time, uh, the patient underwent resection and the tissue came back as oligodendroglioma grade 2, IDH mutated in 1P19 co-deleted. So these are you know tumors which are going to do rather well uh, despite any therapy, despite any uh, chemo radiation. Uh, you know, these, these tumors progress rather slowly and have a longer uh, median survival compared to an IDHY type genoma. Once uh, these genomic subclassification uh, system kind of became a little bit more clear uh, in, in the last uh, uh, seven, eight years, we have been looking at some of these uh, molecule, um, some of these morphologic imaging features, uh, for example, we discovered a feature, we started calling it as T2 flare mismatch sign, which was published in clinical cancer research in 2017. And the important aspect of this feature is that these are uh, tumors which are occurring in younger patients, clinically intact. These are uh, very homogeneously bright on T2 and, uh, and dark. Majority of the tumor is, in fact, hypo intense or dark signal on the flare images, except the peripheral rim over here, non-enhancing tumors, very low blood volume. But more importantly, what we realized is uh, that these tumors, majority of these turned out to be IDH mutated and 1P19Q non codeleted So these are your molecular astrocytomas. So uh, we published this sign, as I said, in clinical cancer research, T2 flare mismatch sign. The important thing was, the sign was 100% positive predictive value. Uh, it's been validated in multiple studies um, by different other researchers uh, since then. Yeah, and uh, and it's, a, it's a sign very specific for IDH mutated astrocytomas. However, the sensitivity is rather low. Uh, this sign does not, this, this feature uh, is not seen in all the IDH mutated astrocytomas. It's only seen in 15 to 20% of IDH mutated astrocytomas. So that's an important thing to understand. So just to summarize, uh, IDH mutated gliomas, they occur in younger patients. Majority of the time the patient is asymptomatic, it's found either, you know, a CT scan done for uh, minor trauma or headaches. Uh, majority of the times these are non uh, these are non enhancing or partially enhancing large tumors uh, they might have have cysts also uh, the prognosis usually is good and and again another important aspect majority of IDH mutated gliomas they occur in the frontal lobe so that's another important aspect i've shown you this oligodendroglioma um, astrocytoma the d2 flare mismatch sign uh, not all the tumors which have calcification are going to be oligodendrogliomas. Uh, we have seen a, quite a few astrocytomas. So the important thing is that uh, you need to have 1P19 to co-deletion status known to really classify them, uh, IDH mutated gliomas, either into oligodendrogliomas or astrocytoma categories. And majority of them are going to be lower grade, grade 2 or grade 3. However, um, there is a small percentage of higher grade or grade 4 uh, gliomas, which are going to be IDH mutated. And, and we discussed 5% of IDH, 5% uh, of primary GBMs are going to be IDH mutated. And this is an example, and we'll talk a little bit more about that um, in the next slide over here. So, as I said, um, um, the IDH mutated GBM, this is a patient, younger patient, 38, uh, a right frontal lobe tumor. And as you can see, the tumor does show some central necrosis and uh, peripheral enhancement, but also notice that there is a large part of the tumor which is non-enhancing. Um, there is some mild edema, there is mass effect due to the large size of this tumor, and this patient underwent uh, resection, um, and, and the histopathology showed that this is a glioblastoma. Uh, and the more important aspect is that this patient also had IDH mutation. MGMT was methylated, EGFR was negative, all uh, favorable genomic markers. Uh, the patient underwent surgery, temozolomide, uh, radiation therapy, and DC VAX trial. And this is a follow up, you know, nine years after uh, the tumor 
uh, is the patient is doing rather well. There is no recurrence seen, uh, and and that's an important aspect to understand uh, because these are these are despite having a diagnosis of a glioblastoma, this is uh, a good glioblastoma to have. And the important um, thing in this in this particular patient is that these are your IDH mutated uh, glioblastomas which are going to do well. So, a few facts about. IDH1 and two mutations, majority of the lower period gliomas and only 5% of the GBMs, primary GBMs have IDH mutation. Uh, IDH mutation uh, is seen more commonly in younger patients. Uh, IDH mutated tumors tend to be far less aggressive than their IDH wild type grade matched um, counterparts. Uh, T2 fear mismatch sign, if you see that, uh, 100%, almost 100% positive predictive value or specificity for IDH mutated astrocytomas, but the sign is not seen in all of the IDH mutated astrocytomas, only seen in a smaller subgroup of around 15 to 20% of the cases. And again, another important aspect um, uh, IDH mutation, um, uh, mutated tumors, they have a preference for frontal lobe. Uh, majority of the frontal lobe tumors are going to be IDH mutated tumors, especially in younger patients. Now, moving on uh, to another category uh, which is uh, new in the uh, WHO 2016 classification update uh, is your diffuse midline gliomas, uh, uh, which classically again occur in younger, uh, younger adults or young uh, children. Uh, this is a 14 year old uh, presented with headaches. And, and you look at this uh, right thalamic tumor, which is causing some mass effect and even hydrocephalus. However, the tumor does not show any enhancement. There is no edema um, associated with this tumor. And the imaging features look fairly low grade. Um, uh, this patient uh, underwent a follow-up MRI two months later uh, with increasing headaches. And, and now, within two months, the tumor has increase significantly in size more importantly also shows some enhancing areas and at this time um, the, the patient underwent uh, um, subtotal resection because of the deep uh, location of the tumor uh, the histopathology comes back as anaplastic astrocytoma on the of grade 3 uh, and based on this you know the patient should be doing uh, relatively well and should have a median survival of uh, at least seven to eight years based on the data uh, we, we, we know. However, more importantly, this patient, um, uh, this uh, young uh, young child actually died within a year because of very uh, uh, bad leptomeningeal spread of the tumor. And, and the important uh, thing to understand uh, why this happened, because this is a tumor which was H3K27 mutant and has been now called as a diffuse midline glioma in the WHO classification update. Uh, and, and, and it's really an aggressive tumor to have. And uh, um, just to summarize, uh, H3K27 mutant gliomas, they occur in children or young adults. Uh, they are either in midline or paramidline. Uh, classic example is thalamic tumors or in the brainstem. Uh, quite a few of the DIPG we know, uh, they are now uh, as k 27 mutant gliomas. Uh, the patients are usually symptomatic, very poor prognosis. Uh, majority will have some kind of leptomeningeal spread and, and the median survival is around one year. This is an, another example over here, uh, an infiltrative tumor in the in the pons in the brainstem in a, in a younger patient. Turned out this was a K27 mutant um, glioma, and you can see the patient doing fairly well within uh, fairly poorly within less than a year. You can see there is tumor is uh, recurring and there is uh, spread as well as leptomeningeal spread of the tumor. You can see enhancing tumor uh, enhancement along the corpus medullaris uh, within the lower part of the thecal sac over here. You can see the drop metastasis and leptomeningeal spread of the tumor. So these are the ones which are going to do poorly. Uh, and as I said, they occur in the midline. We have seen K27 mutant gliomas even in the spinal cord. Uh, this is an example of a younger patient uh, who was suspected to have vertical sclerosis based on um, the paresthesia and then the numbness in the, in the upper extremities and ended up having this MRI which showed a really ugly 
uh, looking tumor in the spinal cord, in the cervical spinal cord, which almost looks like a GBM and turns out this was a GBM on histopathology, but more importantly also was an H3K27 mutant glioma uh, and, and uh, was labeled as a diffuse midline glioma. Another example over here uh, is, is not that common. You know, we, we've seen a couple of cases of these tumors occurring even in the conus medullaris. This is a, again a younger adult uh, uh, who had a tumor in the uh, conus medullaris. Uh, which was presumed to be a mixopapillary ependymoma, however, turned out to be an H3 uh, K27 mutant uh, midline glioma uh, and a very aggressive tumor to have. And that is why uh, WHO glioma classification update in 2016 categorized these tumors as a separate category, uh, calling them as diffuse midline glioma H3 K27 mutant. Why it's important to identify this tumor? Because uh, this is a paper showing uh, how pediatric uh, GBMs uh, 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 correlate with genomic markers as far as their survival. So you can see uh, a smaller subgroup of pediatric GBMs which are IDH mutated doing very well compared to the IDH wild type uh, pediatric GBMs. But if you look at the K27, this tumor is actually so aggressive it's worse than IDH wild type uh, bioblastoma. So it's, it's, it's a category which has been now recognized as a separate category based on this uh, mutation. Now the last category I'm going to talk about is your WHO majority of these are WHO grade 1 tumors uh, occurring in uh, younger uh, patients, younger uh, young children, uh, usually incidentally found or maybe presenting with seizures. As you can see, uh, four different cases and majority of them either have cyst or cyst with a mural enhancing nodule uh, and these are the ones we uh, categorize them as WHO grade 1 tumors. Uh, majority of pilocytic astrocytomas and gangliogliomas, they have this PREF mutation and it's important to identify that because majority of these tumors are going to do really well and the long term survival uh, once resected completely is, is fairly good. Um, however, not all BREF gliomas uh, are lower grade. Uh, there are some aggressive BRAF uh, driven tumors. For example, this one turned out to be a PXA grade 3. This one was histologically called a GBM, a grade 4 tumor, but was a BRAF driven tumor uh, and, and that's important segregation. Uh, the reason it's important because our neuro-oncologists, uh, despite having a, a PXA grade 3, uh, but with a BRAF B600 E mutation, uh, an aggressive leaking tumor after uh, partial resection uh, did not treat this tumor with standard stool, which is temozolomide and radiation therapy. In fact, uh, once we identify these PREF mutations, now in any tumor, these patients undergo a targeted anti PREF and MEK inhibitor combination therapy, similar to these PREF tum uh, tumors in melanoma and lung cancer patients. And this is a six week follow up where you see, uh, where you see tremendous response uh, to, to this kind of targeted therapy. And that's an important aspect. You know, the reason to identify some of these genetic mutations is to have the ability, um, ability to, to, to have some kind of targeted therapy for some of these genomic markers. Okay, just to summarize, um, uh, a few take home points. Uh, WHO classification, glioma classification update 2016 is, is based on the molecular markers, genomic markers, uh, as we've uh, seen now that, you know, IDH and 1P19 correlation status, they provide a better correlation with tumor behavior and biology than was being done by the older traditional histological classification system. IDH mutation is associated with better survival and is seen in younger patients. IDH wild type gliomas, they usually have high blood volume. Uh, I did not really show you an example over here, but uh, that's an, another important imaging marker we know now. And, and as I said, you know, these molecular subclassification, uh, classification, what it has shown us is that these tumors, uh, they really not, uh, you know, just can be categorized as, as a broad, category of gliomas, these are actually clinical syndromes and the reason for that is majority of these molecular subclasses, they occur 
in, in specific age group and they have specific clinical presentation. For example, uh, IDH mutated gliomas, they occur in younger patients, they are usually asymptomatic, frontal lobe, um, these tumors are usually large by the time they present and they have a lot of non-enhancing component, they might have cysts and, and as I've shown you, uh, we, we discovered this t 2 fluid mismatch sign, uh, which has been validated now with multiple other studies. Uh, once we see that, we know that this is going to be an IDH mutated, non co uh, tumor or a molecular astrocytoma. Uh, not seen in all the molecular astrocytomas, but in a smaller subgroup. Uh, whereas IDH wild-type tumors, these are the gliomas which or, uh, uh, which are seen in older individuals presenting with subacute neurological deficit, usually a large necrotic mass with hemorrhage, edema, and high blood volume. And, and these are the ones which are going to do poorly. Uh, diffuse midline gliomas, the H3K, K27 mutant gliomas, occurring uh, mostly in younger patients, either young children or young adults. Uh, they are midline, paramidline, thalamus, brainstem, spinal cord uh, location. And they usually have uh, uh, poor prognosis associated with left meningeal spread. Whereas BRAF tumors, uh, these occur in young um, adults or children, uh, either asymptomatic or presenting with seizures, cortical location of the tumor. Many of these tumors have cyst uh, or a cyst with mural nodule, and, and that's an important aspect. Uh, so I want to thank uh, uh, my collaborators and uh, uh, for uh, as this work, uh, you can see, is not uh, uh, possible without uh, a team effort, and uh, uh, we have a, a brain tumor board, including uh, some of the eminent uh, neuro-oncologists, radiation oncologists, neurosurgeons, and neuropathologists at NYU. Uh, thank you very much.